In this video I am going to show you how you can take a complete disk image of a VPS and store it on one of over 30 different cloud storage providers, like Google Drive, Dropbox and Microsoft OneDrive to name but a few. Over the past 6 months on this channel, I have shown you how you can build a Contabo VPS with a number of different Linux and Windows operating systems. The reason I keep coming back to both Contabo or Vulture VPS providers is that, Contabo although not for beginners does offer you the most resources for the lowest cost, whereas the Vulture VPS control panel is the easiest to use and offers the most facilities in my opinion, from the 20 or so VPS providers I have used over the years. After installing and using one of the operating systems, I am now able to take an image of it, restore a different one, and then redeploy the first image to a separate VPS elsewhere on the Contabo infrastructure. To demonstrate what I mean, I am going to back up my European data center based VPS, with its Windows Server operating system, to my cloud based Google Drive, then restore a Zorin OS version, to take the place of the Windows one. I am finally going to restore the Windows Server image that I have just taken, to a Contabo VPS in one of their American data centers, so I can continue work on it. So let's get cracking. The basic game plan I am going to use is shown in the diagram on screen, is so that you understand the overall picture. This is because, although I am going to be demonstrating by using the Contabo VPS infrastructure where I have tested it, you may also be able to apply this same process on other VPS providers, or even your home PC with only the odd change required, or find different situations where you would like to use it. I am also going to be demonstrating by using Google Drive as the cloud storage location, as it is one of the most popular ones. However, as the R clone program I am going to be using, can connect to over some 30 different cloud providers, if you want to use a different one the chances are that it also supports it too. So, what we are going to do first, and this is a one-off process, is install R clone on our local Windows PC. That is because, when we later run our clone in the Contabo rescue mode which is text-based only, it will want to sign into my Google Cloud via a web browser, and it can use my local PC for that. Then we are going to run the Contabo VPS rescue mode, in which we are going to install our clone and configure it, so it can access my Google Drive and then finally be able to store a compressed image of our VPS's hard drive onto it. It also means, as we can do this on any Contabo instance, I am able to restore the very same disk image, but this time on a VPS running in a different data center. So, first we are going to be installing our clone, the powerful cloud storage connection utility, on our local PC. I am going to be demonstrating by using my local Windows PC, but it also can be installed on Mac OS or other local operating systems, in a similar way. As this is a one-off process, once it's done, we never have to do it again. So, let's do that. I go to the downloads page on the R clone website and get the 64-bit version for Windows. Once downloaded I extract the files. Then for ease of identification in the future, I make an R clone directory on my C drive. And copy the extracted R clone files to that directory. Finally, so they can easily be accessed from any PC directory, I add the R clone directory into the machine's path environment variable. And that's it, it's that easy, we have fully installed it. To test it I simply open a command window, type R clone and press enter. The fact that it responds, means our local PC is able to find it. 
as you can see on screen, I am partway through installing and testing a range of software on Windows Server. So I am going to be imaging its hard disk, loading a Zorin OS operating system I built in an earlier video so I can look at a few things, before restoring the Windows Server image back onto a VPS housed in a completely different data center, where I have another VPS, so I can carry on from where I left off installing and testing Windows Server software. So on the Contabo control panel, I go to the VPS tab, and select the rescue system. On the resultant screen I leave the recommended Debian Rescue version unchanged and enter a password for the root user that I will use in a minute. In the next section I will need an SSH client so I can access the VPS running this rescue system. Now, because I am on Windows, I download the PuTTY SSH client, importantly from the official PuTTY website. Once installed, I start it. As you can see I have already set up two named sessions, if I load the connection to the Europe VPS you can see that it's just connecting to user root, at the server's IP address, on port 22. I have also changed the font on the appearance tab, to something that shows up on this video better. I now return to the main screen, and hit the open button. If asked, I accept the connection. And when prompted, key in the root password we entered a minute ago on the Contabo VPS Rescue webpage, then press enter. Then in the SSH window, that is connected to Contabo's Rescue CD image that we are running on this VPS remember, I paste in the first command that you will find in the YouTube description. This command, firstly ensures all repository indexes are up to date, then gets by using the curl command the latest version of the R clone cloud storage via its install script, makes a directory the cloud storage will be mounted to later, and then finally starts the main R clone configuration. The R clone program has to make a remote connection to my Google Drive, which for shorthand it just refers to as remotes. It finds no existing remotes, so I type N to set up a new one, which will be to Google Drive. I name the remote. It then provides a list of all the different types it supports. I can connect to a whole series of cloud storage options which you can see on screen. However, as I said earlier for this demonstration, I will be using Google Drive, so I look for that. Once found, it can be selected by entering the number 18, or because future versions of our clone might change this number, I use its short name identifier which will not change, which is the word drive. There will now be a series of questions that allow complex connections to be made. We are just creating a basic one, so can leave client ID blank and hit enter. For client secret I also hit enter. For scope, I select option 1 full access. Again, I leave service account file empty, and hit enter. It bundles further complex connections options together, and just asks us if we want to edit any of them, I select no. It then asks us if we would like to use automatic configuration, this means it wants to open a web browser on this VPS, but as we don't have a GUI desktop, it means we have no web browser on this VPS, so I answer no. It therefore gives me a one-line command to copy to my local PC. To do the copying from a putty window, and this will feel quite foreign, is just to highlight what I want to copy, and not hit Ctrl and C, just highlighting it is enough to put it on the local PC's clipboard. I then start a command window on my local PC, which I have given a green background, just so it is easily distinguishable. I then paste in the R clone command, and run it. It opens my local PC's desktop web browser and I log in or select the Google account I want to use. I then allow our clone access to it. 
Once the login shows it has been successful, I return to the command window. and copy the provided authorization code back into the putty window I am using. Now that it has connected to my Google Drive, it asks me whether this is a team drive. I select no. And finally it asks me if all the information I have given is OK. I select yes. It has now finished and using all my answers set up a remote connection to Google Drive which I have called G Drive. I recognize at first viewing, this process might seem complex, but it's really not. Our clone has a website that you can see on screen, and if I scroll down, it has dedicated configuration instructions for all its supported providers which includes Google Drive. If I go in to look at the Google Drive configuration dedicated page, it shows me all the screens I showed you, and below it pages and pages of Google Drive specific connection information, should I ever wish to do something non-standard. This video and everything I have shown you when connecting to Google Drive, came from this page. Returning to the PuTTY SSH window, I quit out of the R clone configuration, and then mount the Google Drive remote to the VPS Recovery's local directory that was set up earlier. So simply accessing this directory from now on is actually accessing Google Drive. We now create a directory on the Google Drive if it doesn't already exist, and then list all files found in that directory. When naming disk images, I have found the following naming convention really useful. The first part tells you what data center the VPS when backed up was in, in case there is anything data center specific about any disk image. The second part indicates the size of the current disk, as any future restoration on a disk will need this size as a minimum. Then comes the operating system in the backup, so that's Ubuntu 22.04 in this case. Then comes the tricky bit, if the machine has a Contabo image at its core, for example on any of the highlighted videos where the image wasn't built from original ISOs that we got as part of the video, or it is not an image that I supplied, then it will have specific IP and network Contabo information in it, which means it cannot be restored to another data center or even a VPS with a different IP address. I have also found in testing that even though in theory this disk image can be restored back on this machine at any time, if this VPS has since the disk image was taken had any other different operating system on it, then returning to this one afterwards, the VPS doesn't always boot up correctly. Therefore I suggest that if your VPS is based on a Contabo supplied image, you just take regular disk images of the VPS to save where you are up to, but never change the machine to use a new operating system, otherwise reverting back to these disk images afterwards may not work. To remind me of that restriction I put the work restricted in the file name, otherwise I leave it blank. I then indicate if it was taken from an SSD or NVMe hard disk in case the disk image has any disk type drivers in it. I then capture the current VPS IP address in case the disk image has any specific IP or MAC address network identification in it. In the next section I will show you how to take a new disk image backup. On screen, you can see I have zoomed into the putty window. To take the disk image, I first key the command lsblk, to see what this rescue disk uses to refer to this VPS's 50GB hard disk. As you can see from the output its device SDA. For reference, I will keep that on screen, while we look at the backup command itself. So, for information this command uses the Linux DD command, and first reads in the input file dev SDA and prints out the current progress. It then passes each chunk of the input file onto the XZ compression command, where it uses compression level 0, which is the fastest setting, and by using the dash T option it is told to use all CPUs on the machine, then even makes it faster than the more popular gzip Linux compression utility. It then pipes that compressed data to a file in the R clone disk images directory, which is on Google Drive.
now it's finished I will quickly show you my Google Drive, via my local PC's web browser. So on screen you can see my Google Drive, and in it a directory called R clone disk images. If I go into that, I can see the file we have just created, and a Kali Linux file I produced earlier. Also a copy of a disk image file where I have on purpose changed one byte of it some third of the way through, just to prove we are able to detect, even such minor damage. So, I return to the putty window, but keep the list of files on screen for reference. The following command, which like all commands are in the YouTube description, is just a standard XZ archive test command, again using all CPUs this machine has, and is just testing it can retrieve and successfully decompress the file we have just written. It should be noted that as both XZ and R clone have independent error checking within them, so all files produced have been fine, but this separate testing of the resultant disk image file just provides additional confidence. And just to show you what it looks like, if it ever detects any errors. If I try to test a file I damaged on purpose you can see that even though it was just a single byte I changed, it has recognized it and reported the error. It should be noted however, in the whole of the last month when I have been researching and making this video, I have never had any file fail this testing process, but I still recommend doing it as a double check. In the next section, I will show you how to restore a backup. Still in the putty window, I am going to restore a version of Kali Linux, I made in an earlier video. As such, this command decompresses the Kali Linux file I have stored on my Google Drive and writes it out to the VPS hard disk which is referred to as device SDA. And when finished I simply reboot. Now this bit isn't necessary, but using the VNC IP address and user credentials I have set up the real VNC client that I have talked about in other videos. But I use it just to watch the European VPS we have just installed Kali Linux on, boot up to confirm there are no problems. I have put on screen the putty window to the American VPS, which I have colored blue, just to distinguish it from the European VPS I was using earlier. On it I decompress the Windows Server 2022 disk image I created, just a minute ago. Again when finished I reboot. And again, I use the VNC viewer to watch it boot up. To prove to you both machines are available at the same time, I have created a RDP link to both and logged on. You can see both RDP sessions on screen now, and although I haven't tested it yet, it should be possible to restore the Kali Linux or Windows Server 2022 disk image onto other VPS providers, if they have a way of booting their VPS off something like a recovery disk or similar. On screen you will find some YouTube videos of mine, that the algorithm has selected for you, that you might like. And if you want to see more videos in the future, like this one, click on the CloudTech logo. Thanks for watching.